Rugby League is back. Drum roll, please. You're a true Warriors fan. I have no recollection of that one, no. We don't all have to agree. It's good to be back. It's just a really boring thing. Oh, partner. Start winning some games. <laughs> I think there'll be a lot of changes to the team. I've got them uh, making the eight for mine. Let's go. Hello folks and welcome back to the Advantage Line, TAB's Rugby League betting podcast. My name is Cal Tiley, not in the Wellington studio today, I am in the Brisbane studio, but in the Wellington studio is my good mate, Paul Mawate. Paul, how's the week going in New Zealand, mate? Yeah, uh, not quite as warm as it is over there in uh, Brizzy, but uh, we get stuck in. Um, it's not the worst, to be fair. It's a beautiful day today um, and Muzz is taking me out for lunch, so I'm looking forward oh. to that. How yeah, good. It's actually freezing. Well, not freezing, but it's cold air over here. It's some of the coldest weather I've ever encountered in Australia, which is wild. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, 14, 15 degrees, jeez. It was one degree the other morning in Brisbane, of all places. Wild. Uh, Teddy, what's the weather like in Sydney? Well, I'm not in Sydney, I'm in Orange. So, so four hours west of Sydney, so, and a lot colder, a lot, lot colder. Uh, we had uh, a feels like minus eight the other morning, so uh, pretty much Siberia out here. Bit, bit nicer than that, but uh, um, yeah, it gets very, very cold up here. It's uh, we're at the we're at the highest point between uh, the Blue Mountains and uh, South Africa, so um, we uh, get pretty cold. Wow, do we get snow in Orange? Uh, so snow on top of the mountain here, Mount Cromwell's, but uh. Um, we'll often snow probably once a year where it'll settle and be kind of thick white snow, but not often, but once a winter, everyone will sort of do it. school. Yeah, nice. Love, used to love a little snow day growing up in the South Island of New Zealand. Oh, absolute, absolute pinnacle of the year, the snow day. It's, um, what you don't realise, though, is like it's very different when you're a kid, you get up and get out and play in the snow. And when you've got two kids of your own, then you've got to get them changed, and you've got to get them rechanged. All of a sudden, the snow, you're dry, you're the one driving in the snow. <laughs> it holds a lot less appeal. Over under number of listeners we've lost or gained uh, with weather chat to start the show this week. 100%. <laughs> we, are, we, we, are, we, are, we have lost all listeners. <laughs> all three of them. How good is weather chat? Um, let's roll straight into a uh, look back at Origin last week. New South Wales got the job done. Um, we each, three of us plus Blake, we gave some bold predictions. I went back and had to listen to those bold predictions to see how we went. Not great. Uh, Blake was probably the closest, I think. His bold prediction was scores tied, Crichton intercept to set up a Moses field goal to win the game. Moses did score when you try it. And scores were tied for a while, so he's pretty close. I'll give him away some props too. I thought Tommy Dean had a great game. I thought he was probably probably close to Queensland's best. And uh, uh, I don't know too many people would have him for man of the match, but if when Queensland were ahead, you would have been rubbing the hands in glee, Paul. Indeed, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought Tommy was a chance for man of the match. Well, I think if Queensland had won, I think Tommy Dearden would have gone close to he, he, he was doing a heap of work there um, in the halves. So uh, not the most, uh, I guess, fancy half, but he gets through the work. Um, so, But in the end, New South Wales um, thoroughly deserved their win. Uh, I, I guess with Billy's selections, it was almost like he went slightly defensive. Um, and I, I think in the end, they, they just didn't have enough sort of creative um, offensive power to, to, to get a, enough points to win. So, yeah, well done to uh, Madge. Um, it came right after dropping the first one. Um, New South Wales picked one up. Teddy, do you, do you apologise for calling Madge a plonker? Uh, yeah, I'll apologise for that. He was a plonker in, uh, in game one with some of his selections, but I'll give him this. Unlike the last three or four origin coaches who belligerently stick with like whatever bad decisions they've made, he adapted the whole way through. It showed in the last game, Mitch Barnett, you know, probably should have been picked earlier in the series, but was finally picked. Had to get, got caught in the game very early, 
with a Quran hat track was absolutely outstanding. And if he'd got given man of the match, there would have been no qualms at all. So I, I, I will apologise for that from a why I I thought he picked a very, very ordinary team in game one. And regardless of the send-off, I think they still would have got beaten convincingly. But credit for being a bit adaptable and really making the right selection decisions. And the biggest surprise to me this series, especially post-game one, was how Maguire became a calmer, more malleable, more adaptable coach. And Slater became belligerent and stuck in his ways. And I paid him to if you picked David for Feeder and both for more, like we were calling for instead of Kurt Capel and Jeremiah and Emma, but, but I, I, think that, I, I think that result is very, very different. Did you hear that, Paul? Teddy apologised. <laughs> you want to keep that uh, that recording there because it, it's <laughs> let's, again, let's clip that one for social. Yeah. Let's, let's lose that one like the Nathan Cleary clip. <laughs> <laughs> Lost into the ether. <laughs> He's not a first grade player. <laughs> um, just well, quickly. Question clear, well, you bring up Cleary night. After Moses' series, uh, you've got to assume Cleary's probably the front runner next year and probably the captain. But gosh, it's a, it's a serious question that'll be asked next year. Moses was brilliant in game two, and when it needed to be delivered in game three, he was there. Can we see a Moses Cleary arms combo? No, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't think that works. I can see it happening. Yeah, maybe, but I, I will say so I'm not a Jerome Lewis fan in any way, shape, or form. That's the best game he's played in Origin. Game three. Yeah, that, and, that, and for some reason, that bobbing up live wire style just meshed well with Moses. I'd say, I'd say Lua meshed better with Moses in those two games than he, than he has with Cleary at, at state level. Lua does not get selected next season. He's going to the Tigers, so he won't get the opportunity. I don't think he'll get selected for State of Origin next season. Yeah. Uh, my, 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 Moses can play six in terms of he can run the ball. He's not a pure, he's not like a Nico Hines, you know, kind of pure halfback there. But it is going to be, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting next year. We're, we're a long way off. And we usually save Origin chat for about February when it starts and, and goes on till, uh, <laughs> till May. So probably don't need to worry about that yet. They can uh, just enjoy uh, an impressive series. We've been like, there were, there were certainly some players that were uncovered at Origin. This is where Maguire will deserve credit as well. But I certainly wouldn't have expensed Lenny in any game. But, like, he's uncovered Mitch Barnett, which we can talk about Newcastle later on. But his development of the Warriors is something else that's a as much an indictment on Newcastle as a credit to the Warriors, finding this players who will be centerpieces of origin for, for years to come. Like, how, can you see Mitch by not, not being picked for the next three or four years? No. Yeah. Not, oh, especially, especially, especially not now that he's the captain of the Warriors and, you know, will likely be the captain of the Warriors for for a long period of time as long as he stays. You know, Tohu's not going to be around much longer. Um, yeah, yeah right. Okay, interesting. Wow, Tohu's held together with sellotape and... No, no, it's in the bonnet will be the captain of the Oh, that's that's just my my view. I haven't, haven't heard anything, but, you know, he was captain on the weekend and he's, AFB has been the other one that's that's been captain over the last couple of years, but he's obviously out, so... Yeah. Yeah. I think it makes sense. Yeah, it's special. I mean, we can get into it later, but the way he backed up two days, turn around like he was the best player on the field, for the Warriors on Friday night. It was unreal. But can you believe Newcastle, Newcastle team that's struggling for forwards? Let him go. Yeah. Well, he, he's kind of like, he was a bit of a loose cannon at Newcastle. Yeah, but that's, a, that's an indictment on the coaching there. Yeah. They kept him into being a, a, a Adam O'Brien just does not develop any talent whatsoever. And he gets, he gets, he gets what, nine months in with Webster? This is his first year, isn't it? Always. Yep. And he is like, he plays on the edge as well as he plays in the middle. He's scoring tries. He gets to a mountain of work. He's playing rep footy. He's a skipper. So <laughs> that's a fair bit of personal development. And you've got to say that's as much on the coach of his old club and his new club as it is on him. You'd have to think he's in line for an Australian jersey too. Yeah, well, if they ever play. If they play, yeah. <laughs> We just name a team. 
Well, they've been, they, they did for years. Yeah. The Melbourne Eagles didn't name a team. So, it, it, Melbourne Eagles got the cushiest job during COVID. We didn't play for three years. He's still getting a fistful whack. They're <laughs> picking out teams. Guess what, Mal? I can do that. <laughs> All right, we've gone we've gone off topic. I'll bring it back. Um, quick look at our results. So Blake had 19-18 New South Wales. Carrigan man of the match. Lomax first try scorer. Dead and last try scorer. Teddy had 24-10 Queensland. Carrigan hammer hammer. No good. Paul. Got the, got the under, sir. Yeah. Yep. That wasn't what I asked you though. <laughs> Paul had 25-24 Queensland, dead in. Holmes first try scorer, Hammer last. And I had Queensland 38, New South Wales 24. <laughs> Which was last out of the time. It was, yeah. Uh, Daily Cherry Evans, man of the match. Holmes first try scorer, Ponga last try scorer. So, How bad was Cherry Evans? Well, that was the worst origin I've seen play. Unlike, unlike, I'm um, a big DC fan. He, he's been, he's kind of had that Cameron Smith like consistency for a long time. I thought he was abhorrent on, on that game. Like, he, even those dropouts that weren't going, that were ending up 25 minutes instead of 10 minutes, he just lacked that attention to detail. So, a bit of a worry there for Queensland. Mm. Paul, should we have a look at the betting recap from last week, please? Yeah, it's fairly average. Uh, I'll start with well, Blake. Well, well, okay. Uh, Blake had two bets, uh, a win and a loss. He had Dom Young to, uh, Dom Young to score a try and Roosters to win one to twelve. Um, no good there. Uh, then he had the Broncos thirteen and over uh, into Manly to win. Uh, and that was paying four twenty six. Um, Didn't they win by twelve? Or they win by eight? Who the Broncos? Yeah. Um, they won. They smashed them, didn't they? Don't question yeah. him, Don't question him. That was the winner. He got a bit of a collect. He's now only down 685.10 for the season. <laughs> uh, nothing from Surly. He's he's gone he's gone able. Um right, Carl had three bets. Uh, a win and two losses. He had the bunnies to score over 40 and a half points at three dollars and ninety cents, yes. which I think Teddy laughed at at the time. Did I? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm yeah. not sure I would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're expecting an apology, I'm afraid he's using <laughs> them. <laughs> uh, Carl also had Roger Tuivasa Sheck to score two or more tries. Um, oh, and then Treble, Waz, Roosters, and Dogs all to win. Now, I'm not sure any of them won. Um, they did not. They did not. <laughs> and uh, Carl is now up 867.11 for the season. Teddy had one bet. Uh, it was a double. Tigers plus 12.5 into the Titans plus 8.5. 100 on that. No good. Ima uh, imagine scoring 28 points and not covering 12.5. Exactly. I, I, I can tell you how I, 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 I've been betting long enough that I can just top a loss and we can just move on. I've, I've been I've been stewing over that one for days. <laughs> that young winger, oh gosh, really poor carriage. <laughs> um, uh, Teddy is now up forty five sixty for the season. Uh, I had two bets: Wars one to twelve, Roosters one to twelve. Uh, no good. And then I had uh, Valentine Holmes to be the first try scorer in the state of O. No good. Um, now down 787.86 for the season. That's it for round 20. Is that you running last, Paul? Uh, yes. I don't think we're focusing on that, to be fair. Um, I think the punters are. Well, I'm going to make it come back. There's a, few out, there's a few out there who are... I know who are just betting the opposite of what Mawadi picks and, uh, and absolutely living <laughs> up this year. They must be lucky. <laughs> if it's your mate, Herb, I'm going unto it. A shout out to Herbie. <laughs> do, you reckon if, do you reckon if someone did a deep dive, went back and listened to all the episodes, it would work out that you and I, Teddy, are actually taking the opposite to Paul as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> just subconsciously. Very good pants. Proper. All righty. Uh, divided opinion this week. And I don't, like every week, I'm not sure we'll get a divided opinion here, but uh, goal kicking is not a skill that is cherished enough in the NRL. Teddy. Oh, my God. I've written about this in, for, for weeks. It is, obviously, it's cost two, it's cost two teams in the last two weeks. Like, like what South did two weeks ago was appalling. It was very Joel Payne on 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 uh, the Game On Side podcast um, went on about. It looked like they didn't even practice. They hadn't even practiced that way. And I, I very much got that feeling. And I'm not, I'm not accusing Chanel Harris to of not practicing, but it certainly looked like he didn't practice because he didn't even line that ball up correctly. That it was uh, next to us. It was like my seven year old goes. He's lined that up out. To, he's lined that up too far. It's like this is not good. You're a professional first grader. Like every team's got to have a backup kicker. Like you look at someone like Daryl Halligan, right? Daryl Halligan would probably be the least talented player to play at British football in the last thirty years. Don't get me wrong. He's one of my favourite all-time players. I think he would be the first to it from a pure athletic standpoint. He wasn't fast. He wasn't tall. He wasn't big. He didn't get through a lot of work. But you know what? He did two things well. He got himself into a tight little ball and fell over in the corner, and he goal kicked like the greatest of all time. And that goal kicking got Canterbury into um, numerous grand finals, and is incredibly important. And teams are not factoring this in enough. Like you need to have Swans need to have more natural goal kickers in their team. And if you've got to hide, I'd rather hide a goal kicker on a winger who does nothing else. And it's a bit of a defensive liability. They do what a lot of teams are doing now and just bring in young wingers who can't kick and also defensive liabilities. But let's like let's prioritize goal kicking. I try to with four points. Goal is worth half of that. Like, that is a 50% of a try that everyone works so hard for. Like it is so important. It, is, yeah. it, it like it drives me nuts. Our team's undervalued goal kicking. But you say we you say the teams need to have a backup goal kicker. I... They should have. There should be five guys, yep. six, seven, eight guys in a team that can consistently kick 70, 80%. Yep. Like, okay. Okay. it's, we've had this conversation earlier in the year. It's not hard. Yep. Like, I played social rugby for a long time and I was a goal kicker. I'm not a professional, but I am pretty confident I would have hit that goal in the dying stages of that game against the Raiders on the weekend. Like, I, I, I don't understand it. Like, I don't know how you miss that. I honestly I, don't know how you miss it. I don't know how we just don't have other people. Mitch Barnett, he used to kick goals. Like, what? Yeah. Give, it, give it to him. You also have uh, another point there as well in terms of they're picking the wrong people to back. Look, look at Damien Cook on the weekend. I had no idea Damien Cook could kick. Kick seven from eight. Uh, and it wasn't used the week before. Like, if this guy's slowing from the sidelines, like, yeah. why is he not being the back? Why, is he, why are we letting... Cody Walker and Tane Milking. And it's the same with you guys. Like, why? Harris to be his, he didn't criticize that last kick, which was a shocker. His first kick was one of the oh. worst kicks I've ever seen in the NRL. And surely it's at that point the coach is going, well, we've got another, let's try somewhere else. Yeah. He almost but hit like, the heart. He was closer to the halfway line than he was the post, that first yeah, kick. He was. And, like, I just don't understand why it's not essentially a part of training where there's a squad of six, seven, eight guys who are taking kicks. Uh, it, there shouldn't be the so-called extras where Nathan Cleary is working by himself for two hours after the game. Should be seven or eight of them doing it. Yeah. Paul, you reckon? What do you, do you agree? You disagree? A hundred percent. And Teddy, his Bulldogs have been blessed with some wonderful goal kickers. And uh, oh, I agree. Daryl Halligan, not the most talented player, but one of the most valuable players. Um, 100%. 100%. I, I still remember that playoff match against Parramatta, I think it was. The Paul Carriage game. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it went to, yeah, it went to extra time. I, I don't think it was Golden Point back in those days. Um, but Halligan had to kick it from as far, as wide as you could possibly get the conversion. Um, yep. Never looked like missing. Um, then you had the likes of um, Hazem El Masri as well, 
who was um, just an absolute... He, he actually had a few more skills than Daryl Halligan, but he could kick as well. So yeah, it's very, very strange that teams, but some teams, don't have that backup um, or don't, or it seems they don't have their plan in place for when your number one kicker goes down. You know, if he goes down in this match, they don't have a, a plan for next week um, or it doesn't seem like they have a plan. So it, 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 as Teddy said, a, a penalty goal a, is worth half a try. Um, it, it's just so, so important to um, pick up points and in close games, um, You'll see, um, you'll see the teams that do win the close games most often than not will have a goal kicker, and the teams that don't probably don't have a good, go- uh, well, a high percentage goal kicker. It's, it's, um, I don't, we'll move on shortly, but it's not like everyone wants to be a goal kicker. If you're a training, any type of training, I've, I've sat there for you know, captain's runs and stuff, and everyone wants to kick goals and drop goals. Like, surely you unlock, you unsurface some talent just by messing around throughout the season. Like, yeah, be better at goal kicking. It's not that hard. In our upgrade. I'll get get the feeling that me and uh, Carl are going to be heading out to a footy field when he gets back here and we're going to be slopped over. We do need to do this. We did promise it earlier in this, in the, uh, the, the season of the pod. So we do need to do that, Paul. 10 from 10, 30 meters out, right in front. And we'll take some 10 metres out, uh, 10 metres left of the post too. This right. is our first to be the spot. We don't need to name names. <laughs> we just, let's, not do the, let's not do the wires like that. Fiddle down. <laughs> not plenty of time to do the wires. All right, let's go to the grid. And if you're playing yeah, at home, pause the pod. Uh, go, do, go find the grid for Tuesday, 23rd of July. Speaking of the wires, the wires feature in this one which isn't normally good for you, Ted. But let's go across the top. We've got Dylan Walker, teammate. Has played for the Eels, played in 2008. Down the left, has played for the Warriors, has scored 50-plus career tries, and has played for Manly. Ted, we'll start with you across the top. What do you got? Dylan Walker, teammate, Warrior, uh, Tom Ali. Brain, 0.84. Um... Eels and Warriors, I probably could have got a lower score here, but I just had to mention the great man, Mark Tukey, uh, 1.67. If, if one player def- defines the Eels and Warriors, it's Mark Tukey. Uh, and played in 2008, uh, Warrior, Wizard, 0.28, Michael Crockett. Oh, nice. I don't know why, yeah, there's some random players are sticking in the back of your mind. When I think of Warriors then, Michael Crockett's my guy. <laughs> You want to go, Paul? Uh, yep. Uh, I've gone Paul Roach, Wizard, 0.08. Uh, Mark Tukey, 1.67. Once again, if you think Parramatta and you think Waz, he's the first player that comes to mind for, for me. In fact, he was in the uh, one of Monty Beethan's once were once was war, uh, once was a warrior, and he he described when they first came over. He came over with another player. I can't remember who it was. It might have been the hooker from Parramatta. I uh, came over and they'd just seen the movie Once Were Warriors and they went to some pub when they got here on a Sunday and it was like out of a scene from Once Were Warriors. So they had a quick beer and then went back to the flat. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark took you 1.67 and then uh, Sam Rapira 2.11. All right. I'm feeling good about this line. Uh, Dylan Walker, teammate, warrior, Dimitrik Sifakula. Wizard, 0.06. Outstanding. <laughs> uh, this one, I've let the team down here, uh, but one of my favourites, Wade McKinnon, 2.77. And played in 2008, Warrior, Brain, Grant Ravelli, 0.92. Underrated player, Grant Ravelli. I thought I was going so well this week. Bloody hell. It's still time, Paul. Still time. Uh, middle row, Ted. Uh, Dylan Walker, team, mate, future plus tries. Let myself down here. Steve Manai, 3.71. Uh, Eel, 50 plus tries. Uh, Brain, 1.46. Jason Moody. 
Uh, played in 2008, 50-plus career tries. Steve Menzies, 0.84. It's going to be tight. This is going to be tight. Paul? Uh, Lottie Takiri, Brain, 2.72. Oh. Luke Burt, 3.12. And I wasn't sure whether to press this one because it didn't have a junior on it. Eric Growth, Unicorn, 0.41. Oh, wow. Yes, but I thought that Eric, Eric Gross Sr. couldn't be on there because he didn't play from 98 onwards. You're learning. Well done. Or it didn't have the junior on the end of it. That's all. This, this one, this square could be my undoing and a real blind spot for me. But Dylan Walker, teammate, 50 plus tries. Sean Johnson, 5.63. Uh, Eels, 50 plus tries. Wizard, but it turns out I've put him in the wrong square. Eric Growth, 1.42. Uh, and then played in 2008, 50 plus tries. The Beast, Manu Vetuve, 0. 0.95. Last row, Teddy. Oh, oh, I'm not going to I've been done here. Oh. Um, Dylan Walker teammate, Manly player, Tom Simons, 0. 0.80. Zero. Oh. <laughs> He's got Eels, this. Eels Manly, Helmut Tualangi, 1.51. He's got it. And played in 2008, Manly, uh, current Orange Hawks coach, Shane Rodney, 1.42. He's done it. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's going to be tight. What have uh, you got, Paul? I've got Shark Eyes, Lewis Brown, 1.95. Uh, and former Warrior, of course, uh, Michael Witt. Another former warrior, 1.70. And another former warrior, Joe Nullivelle, 2.79. <laughs> I started off doing the same. I was going to see how many warriors I could get in the board. <laughs> um, it turns out I've got six of them. So uh, Dylan Walker teammate, Manly, Jason Saab, zero, uh, 1.06. Eels Manly, Justin Hoddle, 2.06. 2008, played for Manly, Michael Witt, 1.29. I've been done here. This, this is, is the 100, 100 metres, just down, who's bobbed the head? <laughs> what have you got, Teddy? Have... What's the score? We're going to have to send it to the bunker. 12.5. Oh, wow. I'm out. I'm done. Spat out of the back. Whitey? 16.6. 16.2. You are kidding. <laughs> That's my best score ever. Oh. A oh. wizard of a unicorn. Oh, this is ridiculous. I'll tell you oh, what's God. better than winning, you know, agreed. Watching Paul come last in a <laughs> <laughs> It's like watching footy. Like, I love watching the dogs win, but gee, I love watching the Eels lose. <laughs> That's that's like the Tiger scoring twenty eight and not covering a twelve and a half. <laughs> oh, that is very good, very good. All right, a quick would you rather? Um, and I thought of, I was thinking of you, Teddy, when I wrote this one. Mm -hmm. But the dollar value here is whatever it is. But for for argument's sake, would you rather only be able to punt in one dollar increment increments once a week? Or one, or have one fifty-two dollar bet once a year. Oh, so what? I can have one dollar bets, one once one dollar bet once a week. Yeah, oh, one one dollar bet once a week. <laughs> I'm an act, I'm an action junkie. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you if you divide it if you divide it up into one fifteen cent bet every every day, I'll take that too. <laughs> Uh, R18, bit responsibly. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. What about you, Paul? What were the two options again? Like a dollar, a dollar a week, a dollar, one bet, one bet of a dollar every week, or one $52 bet. But if the $52 bet wins, I can keep going? No. Oh. Just, oh, trust me, Paul. <laughs> yeah. your, 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 your answer is exactly it's the same as mine. <laughs> I'll take the dollar a week. 
I thought I th- I've thought way too long and hard about this, and I, I've landed on the same as you guys, dollar a week. But are you ch- what, what's the theory there? You're chasing the, are you putting multis together, or are you just sort of building the bank. I am having a multi that lasts for seven days, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm alive, and I'm putting absolute morales in for the first three or four. <laughs> dollar ten, dollar ten, dollar twenty. <laughs> exactly. Four dollars, five dollars, eight dollars. There's no <laughs> profitability kind of just thinking about how you make your profit. This is pure action. This is just like I want to have a bet. Yeah, your fifty-two dollar once a year punter. That that's your Melbourne Cup punter. Um, your, your dollar a week uh, is your sicko like me and Teddy. Tell you <laughs> what, I'm not I'm not blowing fifty-two dollars on a bet on the Melbourne Cup. No way. I'm finding a a uh, uh, one of those sort of certainties that we sort of, we tend to, well, Teddy and I have been finding each week on the podcast. <laughs> um, a bit like, you know, Bunnies to score 40 or more last week at 390. That's that's the kind of, that's where I'm looking at, $52 bet. Here's the question. Like, if you get a winner, what are you doing with the cash? Like, Paul said, if you're, not, if you're not reinvesting it, what are you doing with it? I don't know. Presume I'm, at, you, I'm at a loss. <laughs> I, presume, <laughs> I mean, I presume you can withdraw your money from your account, but... <laughs> I've never, I've never done it. I, I, have, heard, I have heard rumours about that. <laughs> of course you can, punters. You can withdraw your money. This is all hypothetical, of course. Remember? Yeah, more responsibly. Exactly. Uh, Moana, have you got a hunch of the week? <laughs> Teddy's favourite oh, segment. Teddy, he's got his head in his hands. <laughs> I haven't even done it. This is... I mean, where is this? Oh. What was last week's hunch? You had a dream about you're locked in a factory or something. Yeah, I was kidnapped. Um, and it was a factory that were produced uh, miniature Vikings. So I thought I should have a bet on the Raiders. And then I thought, I cannot bet against the Waz. Mm. So I said, no. Um, and I got woken up by the crowing of a rooster. Um, so I thought, well, maybe it's the roosters I should get on. Apparently not. In fact, next time I, I decide... Learn something. To back against the storm in Melbourne, can somebody just stop me, please? Also, like you probably, if you're going to have this hunch of the day, you should probably trust that hunch rather than trying to, uh, mm. to 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 rework it. Just be the bad guy, Paul. Bet, you should have bet the war and the Raiders it would have been a winner. Trust me, being the bad guy is fun. Nothing wrong with being a heel. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, what do you got this week? No, I haven't really got anything. I might right. no, I don't just say it. No. You're halfway there. Yeah, I know. Let's no I might say it if I Look, feel bit towards the end of the show. There's I'm, a segment in the podcast every week called Mighty's Hunch of the Week. No, there is you can't, not. this is not a decision that you get to make. There is a segment for a hunch of the week. Um, and anyone can chuck one up. And Teddy I wait for Teddy to chuck a hunch up. I don't have hunches. If I do have punches, I repress them and I repress them and I repress them and make sure that the numbers <laughs> the numbers win out. Oh. Right, we'll, we'll circle back to this later. I've, okay. I've, usually um, got, I've got I've got an enemy of the week. I've got a best bet of the week. <laughs> I've got a favourite food of the week. I don't have a hunch of the week so far. Does your favourite food of the week differ from week to week, or is it just KFC? No, nah, it doesn't. <laughs> She's a regular up there. <laughs> might have overdone might have overdone it last week so we're off the pair off of a lot well, sp- right. speaking of food did you do the popcorn and ice cream last week no they actually were out of ice cream we were going to and uh, they were out of ice cream wow well I, I probably underestimated so as, as everyone knows Garfield probably I'll give it a, a three and a half stars out of five mm. um, went there and thought oh I've got plenty of time we'll start at 10, 15. 10 I left here at 10 as we off the podcast thanks to a uh, your magnanimous behaviour. Uh, failed one underestimate that it was school holidays. It was in line for maybe 20 minutes before we got in and then, and then ran out of ice cream. So. It's did, tough. Did you book online for movies over uh, there or not? Yeah, so I had booked online, but this was to show, to, to get your actual tickets to get in. There, there was no one else to see them, so a little bit annoying. Oh, mm. yeah. That's tough. So Garfield, rate it. Thumbs up. Uh, yeah, for a kids' movie, it was it was it was good enough. Yeah. I, I, 
when there's a kids movie, I'm going to say I'd much rather be a throwback to my youth and a bit of nostalgia. We went and saw Ghostbusters last time on this. Then I was just like, this is great. This is just a real throwback to when I was a kid. So I'm all up for that kind of behavior. Nice. All right. Uh, let's have a quick look at quick review of a couple of games. Just want to touch on Raiders Warriors. We've kind of already banged on about the uh, goal kicking, but we were terrible uh, in the first half for the most part. The Warriors, Jamal Fogarty dominated in his return, and the Warriors just took too long to get into things. Um, kind of wrestled their way back near the end with the Roger two of us, uh, two of us a chic try. I, keen to hear your thoughts, Teddy, on. I guess the Warriors in general in this game. I thought it was a dreadful game from beginning to end. Like it being harsh on the Warriors, we'll get on the Warriors. But after after the first two Hudson Young tries, the Raiders were dreadful, mm. absolutely dreadful. Uh, Warriors played lost. Like I, I was surprised that they weren't hammering the middle more. Like Canberra particularly weak through the middle, and Barnett and Fennell Blake were his athletic props. As you're going to find, and the most good tries. Uh, I didn't find it with playing out in the back row when he scores that correct. Yep. Yeah. Um, but the DWZ of 2023, sorry to tell you, he is dead. But he is he's playing without confidence. He's catching is shocking. His defense is not great. So, um, but again, like very hard to overcome the injuries. And this is what second week in a row, like. What Tuapiki went down, Pompey, Pompey went off. There's a great stat there. I, I, I don't know, not Scott Bailey for AFP. Um, it's the the average losing margin of teams who have a back on the bench is huge, like twenty odd points. I don't think you you guys had a back on the bench last week. No, you got like you. It is criminal. If you don't, I'm not putting it back on the bench these days. I'm sorry. You're like, the, the, the stats are there. You, well, I don't know if it would have helped last week for you guys because you had two, two backs in injured. It's very hard to overcome. If you don't play back on the bench from now on, seeing what the data tells us, you deserve to lose. Like you just fundamentally deserve to lose. I, I know it can often be seen as a waste of resources and blah, blah, blah. You need it for recovery. Simple as that. Spoiler alert, there's no back on the bench this week. Yeah, I know he deserves to lose. But well, it's just it's just the way I go. I just I don't see any other way around. Like there's enough data there. Like it is it's not like so like, oh I should play back on the bench. Like anyway, this is not something I've kind of grown up believing. Like I was very much like, why are you wasting a spot with a back on the bench and playing five minutes at the end of the game? But but like, this is the numbers are there now. Like you, you are throwing away two competition points because backs get injured, backs get HR, have HIAs all the time. It happens all the time. You need to have coverage, and it is criminally negligent to not do it. Paul, have do you feel like uh, uh, Teddy? You've probably got the numbers here, but I feel like the Warriors have lost a lot more players in crucial positions than any other team at times this year. Like. For to lose your fullback and your goal kicker in the same game is just unlucky. Oh, I am but, laughing. Uh, Adam Pompey is now all of a sudden considered a crucial player based on how he was treated by certain members of this podcast <laughs> earlier in the season. <laughs> <laughs> Look, but uh, hey, in all seriousness, I... sorry, go on, defend yourself, Carl. <laughs> no, no, I look, we took the importance of goal kickers, he's a very good yeah. goal kicker. He's a good goal kicker. Um, oh, I haven't got the numbers in front of me, but you've certainly been a club that comes to mind that have lost fullback after fullback. And we were, and even just dumb things like when you have the two wingers simmered at once. Yeah. Like, like he's, had a lot of, he's had a lot of weird shit happen to your backs. Yeah. Like, and it's been strange, which really makes me wonder why you're not playing a back on the bench. Yeah. So especially after last year where we had, you know, we we're one of the, the best teams in terms of injury. Yep. And yeah, what, what your thoughts, Paul, on the Warriors? Uh, well, I, I want to focus on the Raiders first. I thought Jamal Fogarty made a huge, huge difference to that Raiders team. 
I think if he didn't play, then the Wars probably win a very, very close, low-scoring game. But he usually it takes a player a, a game or two after they've been out for a while to get back into it. He just slotted straight back in um, and picked up where he left off. He he was he was the difference between the two teams, I thought. And, and I agree with Teddy; it was a poor game. There were a lot of mistakes, um, a lot of sort of unforced errors. Um, so, in terms of the wires, look, don't lose hope. They're eight dollars currently to make the eight. Um, all oh, right, all right. They look; they they've got to win out. Basically, they have to win out. But they've got the Tigers this week and the Eels the week after, both up at Go Media Stadium. So, unless something dramatic happens in the in the reversal of the forms of those two teams um and to be fair the tigers put on um some good performances um but the wire should pick up four points from the next two weeks um so if you're still one of the believers and you want to get on i think i would suggest getting on now when they're at eight dollars because i think that price will um just be squeezed in slightly after this week and then squeezed again after uh, the well, after the game over the Eels, if they do pick up two wins, you heard it here first. Punters, Paul's promise you eight dollars and the Warriors to make the eight. <laughs> Why has it changed? Last time just, I looked, just um, just a betting recap as to how how punters are going. Uh, uh, in that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what are they not to make the eight? <laughs> <laughs> there's your multi builder. <laughs> there's your dollar. There's your. There's the first league of your multi. Your Absolutely. dollar in the week. Uh, I I can get behind Paul in this one. You can. Yeah. There's a shock. I would also know this is the Warriors again, not our Warriors. So just sort of... I've been saying our Warriors all <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I've been saying we and us all podcast. Um, next one I want to quickly touch on Storm Roosters. Look, I will never. Uh, next time Melbourne's outsiders at home, I'll. Um, I apologise to everyone for trying to convince you. Otherwise, I know Teddy, you're all over the Melbourne Storm, but I was. I got too deep into my own. Uh, my own stats and my own research, looking at the away team record and their fixture. And it was dumb, and I apologise. How how good is the Melbourne Storm system that they can bring in players like Jack Howarth, Grant Anderson, and they well Nick Meany, who um, I don't know. Just, they, the left edge left, dominated. They are, but Nick he just looked average at the Dogs, um, and, and it may have had something to do with the coaching structure at the time. But so was, coach, was, coach there at the time? was it uh, Trent? Was it Dean? No, it might have been Dean. I don't know. I don't know. That's what a lot of us thought of. Good, <laughs> but he, he's like he's he's kicking goals down there. No, I'm not talking about the uh, points that he scores. He just seems like just a a much better player in a Storm jersey, and, and you see it with a with other players as well. I, I thought Sean Bloor probably had his best game of the season um, against the Roosters. And he was, wasn't was wanted by the Tigers. Um, it's just Eliasa Kator, former Warrior. Um, they let him go. He, he's but looked great, great in a Storm jersey. They just, the system they have down there really, really does um, get the most out of every player that they pick up. And they had a bench. Yeah, he scored first touches on the field for 30 seconds. I don't know. It would have killed a lot of last five score punches right there. <laughs> um, no, nah, oh, look, Paul Mayo, like the storm system works and they do a really smart thing in that they invest big, big money in their spine and then they find players to fit around. <coughs> that left edge is dominated. Sean Blord, Tigers discard, Jack Howard. Um, highly rated youngster who struggled in the first grade, and Grant Anderson, absolutely genuine, absolutely dominated the team. That's 
second part for the Premiership. So, look, it, it was set up perfectly for the Storm. I think the Roosters are about to handle the Storm. When you play that game on Mars, yeah, Roosters go favourites. Roosters probably win the game. You play it not after, you play it on Mars, not three days after Origin, different kettle of fish as well. So, a lot of backing up and all that stuff, but I, I, the Roosters probably won't be happy, but I, I think they'll probably just happily put that in the back pocket and just, just move away. Uh, the Storm, just Oh, that's a game. I had everything to lose in that game, the Storm, and not much to gain. And I, but I thought they, they they managed to gain something by just really shutting down on the enthusiasm that they played with. And um, to be honest, the margin probably should have been bigger. I thought they got very, very harshly treated by some refereeing decisions. Yeah. Uh, last one I want to talk about, Panthers-Dolphins. Um, Nathan Clear is back. Dolphins... Shot out of the gate, scored a lot of points, uh, let, let the pants back in. We talk about a lot about goal kicking. There's been a few field goals attempted in the last few weeks too. And uh, Nathan Cleary comes straight back in and just bangs one over to win the game uh, in extra time. Pretty pretty good to see. And to hear that, that thud off the boot, like, just, he, he, he's so good. I was really torn because I love a long field goal. But I was on the Dolphins at a big price to win that game. So <laughs> <laughs> I was a little up, I was a little upset. Uh Dolphins really threw that one away. And that's and like as a, for a team that's right on the fringe of the eight there, that's a game that probably couldn't have afforded off. Like they're they're now favourites to or they're close to being a favourite to miss the eight now, which is unfortunate. Um especially unfortunate for those who are on them to make the eight, all the night. Um but it was, you know, that's just classic parent like that. That was not a game. Like, I'm talking about being or whatever. <clears throat> that was not a game parent for lineup to win that. They rested all their origin players. Like, they put in the players coming through, but they had their depth stretched over the last four or five years. Dolphins needed to win. They were a great bit of the plus. But for them to pull that out, now things are just going to start gearing up, gearing up for but for the Panthers is their you know, their their quest for four straight is right on track. I think you look at it now, you've got the Panthers and the Storm sort of here. Then you've got the Roosters, I think, slightly underneath, and then you've got a few more under that. And the Panthers, you could probably say, when fully fit. They're probably just slightly ahead of the uh, storm as well. They're just, they're, well, that junior program that they had here, uh, that they have there, is just reaping so many rewards now. Um, and and they seem to be able to cover losing players. Have a look. Crichton, Kiko. Um, they, they're, they're very much like the storm were when they were, you know, losing players like Greg Inglis. Um, they just keep keep chugging along. Um, it's good to see if you're a Panthers fan or a Storm fan, but if you're one of the fans of one of the other teams in the NRL, it's a bit tough. Uh, Dolphins, 195 to miss the eight at the moment. Tell you what, I'd love to go back to 2011 and just give Ivan Cleary whatever he wants, the checkbook, the keys to Mount Smart, whatever. It, 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 look, it, that kind of counterpoint to history is it's interesting, right? Because would Ivan Cleary become the great coach he is now? Had he have stayed there? Like, I, I don't know that he would have. I, I don't know that he would have if he just kind of continued on that Panthers run the first time around. Like, I think getting mm-hmm. fired and, and then kind of having some introspection stuff. Obviously, you have Nathan Cleary, which is obviously big, take you a long way as to <laughs> the way you need to be. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting to see whether Ivan would have, yeah, would have would have survived long enough at the Warriors to see Nathan come through and play. So yeah, 2011, when did, when did Nathan debut? 16, 17? Yeah. Warriors didn't show a lot of patience with coaches then. Because because they got rid of Cleary. Yeah, but then just took just guess, took us to a grand final. What well, was McLennan, Elliot, McFadden? Yeah, don't, don't, bring, don't, don't bring it up. 
tough patch. <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Positivity. We're going to stick with the Warriors. They are dollar twenty six favorites against the Tigers, who are three dollars ninety uh, at Mount Smart this week. Warriors have won eight. Uh, sorry, six in a row, seven of the last eight. Uh, in five of those last six matches, the average winning margin was 4.8. And then there was the 20-point blowout uh, at the homecoming. When the Warriors returned from Australia after that COVID period, Warriors are 13.5-point favourites. Teddy, I've read your preview this week, and I know you are not big on the Wars. Tom, they are absolutely the lay of the week this week. They are... Here we go. In the last four years, they've started double digit favourite five times. They've failed to cover any of them. They're 4 and 12 against the Scribble and failed by more than six star points. How was just 3 of 11 amounts to Smart Stadium? Look, trusting the Tigers is, can be an expensive experience. I know that firsthand. Uh, but teams are conceding 42 plus. They cover at 59% in the back end of the season. Tigers, they've covered. 11 of 17 as a double digit dog that's consumed 30 plus. Of the last six premiers to have been decided by six or fewer, and I absolutely love the team change that we've seen this week. Since I've John Bateman's been sent back to Super League, he has not been putting in. David Clemmer, who absolutely has not been putting in, has not been picked. He's, he's quote unquote injured, um, but wasn't in the in, not in the squad. Uh, Isaiah Papali back, I think, is probably their best player. Uh, Staff of Toa is a huge upgrade in the outside backs. Uh, I think Bull's playing well. Galvin is really finding his feet. I think the plus here is absolutely free. And I think the like, these are going to be off the stick. You can, take the, you can take the plus if you like, punters, but all, all the Warriors want is two points. The, yeah. the one I'll... Well, the Warriors should win a dollar 24 favourite, so they should win. They are. They're averaging 22 points at home this year. Tigers are only scoring just over 14 away and giving up 35. Yeah, they so, can't tackle. You're not 40 plus in the last four games, which is concerning. Yeah. Well, well, I, I just know the Warriors got the points in them to go that far. Like, Warriors attack seems to be limited. Would that be fair to say? Uh, I think Roger being at fullback this week, he's a, that's, a, that's an asset. Um, you know, Ali Lautaro did, probably didn't have the greatest game last week, but he's gets another crack. I mean, I'm just looking at the team after the way Harris Tavita kicked the goals last week. This confidence got to be dented. Like, who's who's kicking goals this week? Would be fine. Would have to be right. Love seeing a prop kicking goals. Paul, where where are you thinking this game? Did Roger used to kick? No. Play Union. Surely kick somewhere in there. They all kick in Union. Yeah. Didn't Dallin, what, didn't Dallin used to kick goals? Stand by. Sorry? Stand by. Okay. While we stand by, I'm going to totally refute uh, Teddy's statistics. I'm all over the wires this week. <laughs> shock uh, me. Shock me. I'm all over the wires. Um, back home, uh, look, I'm sure they have a plan going into this uh, game this weekend um, around goal kicking. Um, so uh, I expect to see a, a much improved performance from whoever does take the goal kicks. Um, and I, I think they've got enough. They, they're playing against a club that seems to be in a wee bit of turmoil at the moment. A few things going on behind the scenes. Um, as Teddy said, maybe not wholesale changes, but they've made quite a number of changes because of the performance or underperformance of a number of their uh, big signings, um, uh, Bateman and, and Clemmer. So I think with all that in mind, I think the Warriors are a good, good bet this weekend, and I will be slotting them in as a little multi and get in a number of my multis. So happy to take the dollar twenty six, and they have drifted out from the dollar twenty four they were um, yesterday. Tigers have squeezed in slightly from 420 to 390. Mitch Barnett, 16 from 21. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Roger Two of Ashashek, one from two. Samara Martin, zero from one. And 
Dallin has never kicked. Okay. Pretty obvious. Now might, now might be your time, Dallin. No, yeah, Mitch Barnett surely has to be the guy. <laughs> so, hey, hey, Mitch, so do you want to be prop our backup back rower? Um, <laughs> can you goal kick and can you captain us? <laughs> Please. <laughs> He's got big shoulders, Teddy. Don't worry about it. We've got one other, one other for you. Dylan Walker, 42 from 64 in the other row. There you go. Oh, good. But, uh, not, not the best percentage, but we know he can probably kick them from close. Last kicked in 2017. Mm, long time ago. Um, what other games do you guys want to have a look at? I've got a couple circled here, but Teddy, I'll let you have a crack. Well, I'll have a crack at the game of the week. Um, Roosters Manly. Uh, and I'm absolutely declaring the Roosters as one of my few five five truckers for the year. As the best bet of the week. As an absolute morale. Minus six and a half. This is a huge spot. Here's a stat for you, Paul. Top four teams off a loss cover at 85% in the post-origin period. 85%. Teams are scoring 10 or fewer, cover a 64%. Same period. Roosters won 7 and 11 against Manly, 7 and 3 against the spread at Allianz. Uh, Manly often turn up away from Brookvale, cover just 3 of 9. Just disregard any Sunday afternoon, fo- afternoon football you see at Brookvale. They are a different team in that scenario. I was going to remember that when I was back against them. When they're at home on a Sunday afternoon, just load up on them. And when they're away, take them on. Uh, fourth, fifth, fifth battle, Roosters will be on. No origin backups here. Stability and team. This is a smash job on the Roosters. All righty. Don't mind that. Don't mind that at all. Paul, what uh, game would you like to pull out? Uh, I'm going to go with a Sunday afternoon game. The uh, uh, Dragons up against the Panthers. Um, and, and I actually like the uh, Dragons here, um, certainly at the line. Um, at home plus eleven and a half. I, I think that's a. This is a. This is a much better team this season um, with the coaching they've had than they were last season. I know the Panthers looked really, really good last week, and Clary will be a much better for his gallop. But I just think that the Dragons, um, the way they've been going, I, there's a. I think there's a change in culture there. Um, and so I'm happy to get on them. I'm hoping that Teddy's stats will go. Uh, yeah, it probably is the bit, the plus 11 and a half. I just think it's a wee bit too much. Yeah, Teddy's stats are fully with you there, uh, Paul. Uh, love the Dragons this week. They've covered five straight against the Panthers. They won uh, eight weeks ago. Origin impacted admittedly, but key here, Wollongong. 14 and 4 against the spread of Wollongong the Dragons. Nine of the let's cover nine of eleven as an underdog at Wollongong, six of seven as a win off a, off a win at Wollongong. And the Panthers, they are just a slightly below average team when a double digit favourite. So um big number here. I think the market's well and truly overreacted. Panthers are just kind of gearing up into it, but this is a dragons are nine. This is a game they will well and truly be up for. Big crowd, Wollongong. Yeah, I think it's a great bet for the Dragon Foster. The other one I wanted to look at, and keen to hear you guys thought, the Raiders $1.64, Bunnies $2.30. I saw this and immediately thought, smash the Bunnies as outsiders here. Then I had a look at the stats. Turns out Canberra won five of the last seven, seven of the last ten between these two. But the Bunnies have won five of the last eight in Canberra. Um, I, I call it a hunch, maybe. I've just got this feeling of, you know, of the two teams battling out for the top eight, the Bunnies have got a lot more upside and they feel like a little bit safer. I know the Raiders won last week, but they just feel they feel safer than the Raiders do. And at $2.30, it's very enticing. They're back three. Gay guys scored five tries in his last five. Alec Johnson, back-to-back doubles. Jai Gray scored three straight, like, what what do you what do the stats say, Ted? I can't make a great case for South, but I can make a great case for playing for betting against Canberra, which leads me, which leads me to South. 
These numbers are completely damning and it means you should never back the Raiders in this situation. They are 12 and 28 against the spread against teams outside the top eight. 5 and 13 against the spread in their last 18 at home. 14 and 31 against the spread off a win. 14 and 33 against the spread as a favourite. If there is a play against team of all time, it is the Raiders this week. Like, how you can take a dollar sixty four or lay the three and a half of them? Hard pass. Even last week, they didn't cover the final number of two and a half against the Warriors. So, mm. um, yeah, got to be a South here. I, I like the over in this game. I think there's going to be plenty of points. Uh, South big over spot here. Twenty two and six. We're not considering twenty eight plus the over. So, uh, and. Um, uh, 21 games these guys have played since 2008. 16 have gone over, so um, as you match up for, for plenty of points. So, uh, yeah, like the uh, overs, but yeah, which other bonus they've, they've got to be a bet. Nice. Any thoughts on that game, Paul? Yeah, I'm I'm with betting against the Raiders as well. Um, so I'm with Teddy there. I'm happy to take the plus um, on the buns. All right. It makes me extremely, extremely confident hearing those stats, Teddy, after uh, my initial hunch, should we say. Turn the hunch into a reasonable logic and the right is right. It's not that hard, Paul. Oh, while, we're talking, while we're talking about hunches, are you, you manning up? Are you going to let us know yours? Or All right. Here's my hunch for this week. So I'm getting the bus home the other day, looking up at the sky, and there was a cloud. It was shaped like a dolphin. So I'm thinking, all righty. I'll go the dolphin, surely. And I, I thought a wee bit deeper. I thought a wee bit deeper. There, there was. This, this, and this is where the problems <laughs> problem start. This is where you stop, punters. Go smash the dolphins. Smash the dolphins. Don't listen to anything else. Carry on, Paul. <laughs> so up in the sky, if you're a religious person, you're probably thinking of God. Um, and with some of the things that happened over the last week or two, um, religion has probably come into it quite a wee bit more. Um, so first of all, you've got the cloud shaped like a dolphin, looking up at the sky, thinking of God. Isaiah is another word for God. He plays number seven for the dolphins. So I'm going to take, Isaiah Katoa to score a try and the Dolphins to win. There we go. It's a little same game multi for you. There's my hunch. It's it's straightforward, this one. Teddy's gone. It's he's, not the worst. It's... He's watching movies. He's I'm, watching just, the... I'm just back checking whether Isaiah means God. It's what I'm actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it does not. But... Isn't it isn't it what Messiah? God saves. God saves. Oh, well, 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 there we go. Saves our multi. There <laughs> go. What more do I have to do? Salvation of the Lord. Salvation, Salvation. of the Lord. Salvation <laughs> of my hunch. Fight, fight, fight. Well, let's hope he runs the ball and scores a try a bit more than he uh, uh, and doesn't doesn't hand it up like he hands up a chance to kick a match winning field goal from next to the post. Well, he scored a try last week. Yeah, didn't get the winning field goal, which he could have and should have. Yeah. Um, right, should we do some betting? Sure. Yeah. Got a hundred bucks each a week to spend on whatever we like. Uh, Teddy, we'll start with you. I'm going full there here. It's as hilarious as I get because I've, I've, I've got a big number to chase down on Carl. So I'm having $100 on the double. Roosters minus six and a half into the storm. 30 plus at three dollars uh 20. so that will be uh around the 650 quote i think it will be wow. 150. uh just i just don't want to pass up the opportunity uh but trent barrett is 13 and 51 uh, as head coach over the last four years <laughs> and the storm are flying and the eels have lost mitchell moses and months is probably back so <laughs> like this is like uh, I, I, I very nearly had the lot on 51 plus it. Very nearly had the lot. So this is a yeah, very, very keen on the storm to absolutely run right. All right. I like it. Larry. Uh, yours, please, Paul. Yeah, I'm, probably, I'm stealing one from you, uh, to be fair, Cal. 
I was going to do me try score a bingo, uh, but there are three games on Sunday, so the uh, one to seven uh, across the Sunday games is only paying two dollars and fifty cents. So I'll leave it. I, I do like it, but I'll leave it. I think there's some very very good games on uh, Sunday. I'm going to go to the Waz game, uh, and I'm going to take Roger Tuivasa Shek to score two or more tries. That's paying five dollars. Whole hundred goes on. Yeah, okay, you can have that. Um. I've got two players this week, and you're not going to like this, Ted, but it's one of them is very similar to yours. I've got Melbourne minus into Roosters minus. I've got oh. 50, 50 on that at 361. <laughs> you're, try, you're trying to bridge the gap, and then someone prices right to you. <laughs> this is straight bat. Maybe you should get Calder to say his bits first. <laughs> <Ted. You laughs> 100% will be doing that from now on. What a what a jam that is. Uh, we just got to get this home for the punters, you know. A little flick off the pads. Um, and my second 50, everything's telling me to go just bunnies head to head at $2.30. But, but after what Teddy said, and, you know, we might give him a little chance here. I'll take the double. Uh, where is it? Winner, winner and total points double in that game. And we'll go South Sydney into the over 50 and a half at $4.50. And I'll have 50 on that, please. Anything Those from my bets? I've got, uh, give me a second, I've got Blake's bets here. Oh, he sent me, like... he sent me, uh, he sent me one multi and then he quickly deleted it and he's, He's changed his mind and he's put all hundred on Warriors half time full time double, Panthers half time full time double, and the Roosters head to head hundred on at three dollars and two cents. What have you guys done to Blake in New Zealand? Like, it's a real full, <laughs> full brainwash situation going on over there. <laughs> and nothing from Surly again. Let's just assume he's going to take the Warriors by fifty. Any uh, promos this week, Paul? Yeah, we've got the uh, three or more legs, same game, multi bonus cash back um, up to $50 if one leg fails. That's uh, from Friday to Sunday, one per day. Check out all the T's and C's, the TRB website. Of course, we've got the uh, Oval Ball Mega Multi as well, uh, where you can multi up a few of the games. Um, and if you're slightly unsuccessful, um, you might just get some bonus cash. Uh, once again, check out the T's and C's. Very nice, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time, Teddy. Hope you have a good day. Absolute pleasure. You guys too. A good week yeah. and uh, plenty of winners. Well, it, Paul, I guess Teddy got to feel our sort of pain with the uh, result from the Dogs game last week with a, a refereeing decision or two going against the Dogs. A refereeing decision or two? I'll tell you <laughs> what. The, 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 Look, I'm trying to wrap this show up, not keep it going. <laughs> The, the, the amateur judges and the boxing of the Olympics are less uh, are less spicy <laughs> than, uh, than the refereeing I saw on the weekend. That was one of the. the you, you, do you remember? Um, you remember Andre the Giant v uh, Hulk Hogan in the eighties, Paul? Yes. When um, when the twin referees, there was a switch, and the evil Hebner referee came in. Well, that's what I saw from Jared Sutton on the weekend. Absolute stitch up. Just as much as a stitch up as Paul's <laughs> comment to get that out of you, Teddy. Look, I was going to say thank you, Paul, but I'm not. I'm just going to say goodbye. Thank you to the punters, and we'll be back next week to do it all again. Cheers.